We're going to be in Jeremiah 8 today. If I can make it through. You see, this is one of those passages that as a pastor, when you're studying and you're reading and you're just going through life, that God really does his shaping. And he really does a work on your own heart as you're trying to develop the word and you're trying to say, God, what are you saying in this passage for us? This is one of those passages. This has been one of those weeks. And so today as I stand with you to continue our journey through Jeremiah, our short journey here. We come to one of these passages that just cries out to God. And it says, God, oh, I'm tired. It says, God, life has been happening too hard, too fast, it's too difficult. It's too challenging. And I'm just broken. And here in this passage in Jeremiah 8, we find the prophet talking to us. And he's saying just that. He's gone through this journey of doing what God has asked him to do. He's, he's been crying out to the people of Israel. And God's been giving him chances to, to share visions with the people and to talk about how they can be shaped. And then we come to this moment where the world has just turned its back on God. And so when we think about Sundays like Freedom Sunday, to where creation and the world is just doing some terrible things, terrible injustices. When we think about all the stuff that just happens in our own lives, and we just say, man, enough's enough. As we look at these things, we come to this lament passage. Now, Jeremiah... He's a good lamenter. Very good lamenter. And so today we're going to look at that. We're going to look at what it means to, to just cry out to God. To just raise our hands up in anguish and just say, enough. You know, the enemy just likes to throw darts. You know, I have a mic, so I, I get to be a little more audible and a little more upfront with our journey, but I know each and every one of you has had darts thrown at you, and it's tough. And so it was already a tough week. It was already just, just one where I was just like, oh, can I take one more setback or whatever. And then I came to church yesterday. And somebody with a crowbar decided to break a van window out there and it decided to take it to our trailer. And it's a well-built trailer. I'll tell you, they didn't get in. <laughs> I can't get in now, but I think... But it's just another thing. Another thing to serve to distract you. In church, there's some great days ahead. There's some great things that are going to happen out of this place. If we're broken. 
And if we're ready and we're able to say, God, shape us. God, take the tiles of my life and put them into something beautiful and amazing that you can use. God's going to do that for us. But in those moments, as we gather in community, we lament and we cry out and we say, God, hear our prayers. We say, God, listen to our grief. And so I ask you, as we head into this passage today, Jeremiah 8, verses 18, through the first part of chapter 9, verse 1, I ask you to to stand. And we do this in honoring and reading of God's word, and we just give it a special place. Be reading from the New Living Translation, the scriptures on the screen. I invite you to, to continue to practice of bringing your own scriptures, holding them in your hands. I even like the I even like the paper ones rather than the phone because you can't you can't make that noise with a phone. <laughs> you can't do it. it. Just hear now the word of the Lord. My grief is beyond healing. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem, the people ask? Is her king no longer there? Oh, why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods, says the Lord. The harvest is finished and the summer is gone, the people cried, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the, with the hurt of my people. I mourn and overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears. The word of the Lord for us today. You may be seated. That was definitely not a paper Bible. (laughs) For those who are going to be listening online later this week, chapter 8, verse 22, and chapter 9, verse 1 were just read aloud by someone's phone. (laughs) And so let me read those again. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. Whew. Jeremiah just crying out. And he's just saying, where are we? What is happening? What's going on? Jeremiah, all through this book and introducing here, and you even see some, in the, some of these in the Psalms as a practice of crying out. But Jeremiah himself is credited with writing most, if not all, of, of our book, Lamentations. A whole book of our Old Testament is people crying out to God. And not just crying out of, Lord, help us, save us, but it's, it's crying out in anger. It's crying out in anguish. It's, it, it, it's, it's accusations against God. And so we're here today to say, sometimes that's okay. Sometimes that's okay. One of the questions that I'm learning to ask, and it's a question that I want you guys to begin to ask yourselves, is to not say, why is this happening? Don't, don't, don't sit there and say, God, why are you doing this to me? Or why is this being allowed to happen? Or why does this continue 
No matter what I'm doing, no matter how hard I try, this still happens. Why? Now I invite you to ask this question instead. What? What is this moving me towards? Don't simply cry out to God and say, Father, why X? Fill in the blank. But simply say, God, what? what? This circumstance is happening. This is going on. What are you moving us toward? What are you moving me toward? Because when we begin to ask those questions, it reshapes and it reframes how we begin to look at things. And I'm, I'm here to say, suffering is everywhere in this world. Our world has been messed up. The enemy is in control. Genesis chapter 3 happened. Sin entered this world. And because of that, the enemy is here. And we don't want to give power to the enemy. and We don't want to give him more than he's due. But he's here. And he's in control. And because he's in control, bad things happen. Okay. So what is this moving us towards? God, where are you shaping us? You see, a lament in these moments, just by definition, is is a passionate expression of grief or sorrow. A lament is where we're bringing our pain to God. God, where are you moving us? God, where are you moving me? The psalms of lament are psalms that express grief. Now, this grief comes, and we'll see in Scripture, if you were to do a study, the, the, the laments come from kind of three, there's probably more, but three main areas of, of cause and the cause and effect here. First one is sin. We sin. Things happen. We do things. The children of Israel in our passage are crying out because they've sinned. God was telling them. God was warning them. We went through that discussion. We've gone through that journey where God was saying, do this or this. And God did. And now they're like, oh. It's one of those moments where you're living your life in if we were to look at it in our own lives, that that we were told to do something. How many of you were ever told to do something, didn't do that thing, and then the thing that was warned might happen happened, and you regretted what was happening? When I was a teenager, it usually came with the Board of Education right? I don't know where that board ever went, but it's gone. Um, (laughs) As an adult, it's different circumstances. I know a friend who had uh, had been warned about having buying the special coverage for replacement glass on their on their car. And and they didn't want to spend the $250 to get the replacement glass on their windshield. Well, now we come from an area, uh, I don't think they do it here, but they chip seal in, in I, I don't know if they chip seal here, they probably, you have a lot of dirt roads and gravel roads, so they probably oil them for sure. But in Nampa, they would have a paved road, and their maintenance on a road would be to cover it with oil. And then they cover it with oil, and then they just lay down gravel. And you'd drive on the gravel, and it would eventually work its way into the oil and the tar, and and it it created a chip seal. Um, Chipped gravel and oil, and there you go. Here's the challenge. They put gravel down. And when you're driving on gravel, cars tend to kick up the gravel and the rocks, and it pits your windshield. Well, 
rocks and windshields don't do well together. Long story short, forgoing a $250 special glass protection ultimately ends up costing several thousand dollars in breakage of glass. One of those moments where then they're going, oh, why didn't I listen to you? It's those moments that we cry out in the children of Israel because of of a decision they made, a decision to sin, or crying out to God in our passage and saying, oh, where are you? You see, they thought they were invincible. They thought they were above all that. We're God's people. We're his chosen people. And because we're God's chosen people, God's with us, he'll protect us, the countries are coming in around us. It doesn't matter, we're God's people. Oh, but you're not living like God's people. They forgot that part. And they began to sin against God. And so they eventually were broken. And then it was those moments of just crying out. And they were weeping and coming to those moments of repentance. So this, so this lament caused sin. The result ends up being repentance. But it still hurts. But other, other laments come out of the fact that, that there was illness. Somebody got sick. Somebody died. We hear about these stories in our own scriptures. On occasion, Jesus intervened and he brought them back. Famous story is Lazarus. Oh God, oh Father, Jesus, if you were just but here, you could have healed him. Getting angry, son of God, for not being there. Out because someone, I'm starting to lose the mic, I think. But you cry out, can I have somebody bring me another battery? Just And we'll switch it out if this goes. But we cry out to God and we say, God, it's your fault you weren't here. God, it's your fault that cancer happened. God, it's your fault that you were in this accident. You weren't here to save me from this accident. And so these things happen. And so we cry out and we say, Father, why? So we have sin and we have illness, but then we also have enemies. We'll find that the laments are speaking out to enemies. That people are coming to attack. So in, in, in the case of the nation of Israel, it was, a, it was a sin issue, but God allowed the enemy to attack. So it was a little bit of both here. But in our own world, you've got Satan throwing the darts at us, and you have enemies. I didn't know my trailer made anybody angry, <laughs> but it did. And somebody attacked it. It just attacks us. Or you're, 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 you're fill in the blank. You know the stories. You're trying to do something in our community and the community doesn't like it. Or you're trying to do something in your own school and the school doesn't like it. Or you're trying to do something in your own workplace and the workplace doesn't like it. Or you're trying to do... You have enemies in this world. We live in a world that is countercultural to the kingdom. So we have to be different. We have to be the countercultural. Let's get that right. We are countercultural to this world. Our kingdom, the kingdom of heaven, the kingdom of God, coming together as believers, the fact that we gather as a community, we are in this place to be shaped differently than this world out there. And because we do things differently, because we, we, we gather to worship God, to live as how he has asked us to live, the world fights against us. 
So we lament, and we lament because of sin and, and the circumstances. We lament because there's illness. We lament because there are enemies standing at our gate. And lament ends up being a directed grief at God. A lament even challenges God. I want to flip over to Psalm chapter 22. And I want you to hear these words, verses 1 and 2. My God, my God, why have you abandoned me? Why are you so far away when I groan for help? Every day I call to you, my God, but you do not answer. Every night you hear my voice, but I find no relief. Directed grief at God. Psalm 55, verse 1 through 3. Listen to my prayer, O God. Do not ignore my cry for help. Please listen, answer me, for I'm overwhelmed by my troubles. My enemies shout at me. They make loud and wicked threats. They bring trouble on me and angrily hunt me down. How about 142? 1 through 4. I cry out to the Lord, I plead for the Lord's mercy. I pour out my complaints before him and I tell him all my troubles. When I'm overwhelmed, you alone know the way I should turn wherever I go. My enemies have set traps for me. I look for someone to come and help me, but no one gives me a passing thought. No one will help me. No one cares a bit about what happens to me. A lament is directed grief at God. We have evidences in Scripture. The psalmists give us these examples. Lamentations give us these examples. Jeremiah gives us these examples. Isaiah has some of these examples. To where we can cry out to God and say, God, why are we in these moments? And yet, we often sit there and go, Oh, don't put the Lord your God to the test. Oh, we don't want to get angry at God. God can smite us and strike us down. But why are we so hesitant sometimes to just cry out to God about our heartaches? Spoiler alert, God knows how you feel. Wow, that had some reverb on it too. <laughs> he knows how you feel. He already knows, so it's like, why not just have that conversation with God? Be honest with him. Be honest with yourself. And say, God, this is, this is how I feel. You see, Jeremiah was a prophet for God. And he was reading this. But I want you to hear these verses again. But because he was a prophet for God and he was crying out for his people, let's look at this passage another way. Let's hear these as God's words. Let's hear this as God lamenting. Because the prophet spoke for God. Jeremiah, remember back when we talked about the call? I said, Jeremiah, I'm going to give you every word that you need. I'm going to put it in your mouth so there's no room for anything but you. Here they are. My grief is beyond healing. Hear this as God. My heart is broken. Listen to the weeping of my people. It can be heard all across the land. Has the Lord abandoned Jerusalem? The people ask. Is their king no longer there? Why have they provoked my anger with their carved idols and their worthless foreign gods? The harvest is finished and the summer is gone, the people cry, yet we are not saved. I hurt with the hurt of my people. 
I mourn and I'm overcome with grief. Is there no medicine in Gilead? Is there no physician there? Why is there no healing for the wounds of my people? If only my head were a pool of water and my eyes a fountain of tears, I would weep day and night for all my people who have been slaughtered. God grieves for us just as much as we grieve. His heart is the same. Remember how we talked about creation and last week that, that, that God was decreating his creation? That creation where he took six days and he made everything that was good. And then he came to the very end and created you and I. And he saw the humans and he said it was very good. And then he began decreating it. He's crying out. This is something I've made. Why are we doing this? As a father weeps for their children, it's the same thing. And so we grieve back and forth. God grieves with us. So why be hesitant to, to talk to God about our brokenness, about our heartaches? We shouldn't. You see, he wants to hear from you and I. Here's the cool thing about laments. They were communal. They were done in community. The psalms, the, the, the lament psalms that are written for us and, 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 and the orders of worship that are there in the psalms, they were done to be worshipped together. They were there to be cried out together. Why? Because we don't do this alone. We are not meant to live this life in isolation. And so we gather as a people. And we grieve together. When someone is sick, when someone is hurt, when someone is ill, we journey with them. And we say, man, let me walk with you. I may not know exactly how you're feeling or what you're going through, but I'm here for you. I can pray for you. I can cry out to God on your behalf. And that's what a community does. When someone loses a job, we, we come around them and we help support. When someone's laying in a hospital room dying of cancer, we are present with them and with the family. When someone loses a child, we grieve together. Laments were meant to do in community. And so we come here to God and we just, we cry out together. That's why I'm trying to be so vulnerable this morning of just how God has just broken, how I've been broken. Okay, I, I, I don't mean to say God has broken me, but how I've just been broken and I'm just crying out to God. And I'm just saying, God, allow me to journey together with my family, my church family, as we just fight one thing after another because I know you've got some good things ahead. Remember those questions we were asking? We're saying, God, not why is this happening, but what are you moving us toward? God, not why is this happening, but what are you moving us toward? Where are we going? What are we going to do? Man, the enemy is just active. So what good things are going to happen? Because you get to those moments like Jeremiah in this passage where he says, where's the balm? Where's the healing? Now, the balm of Gilead is, is mentioned three times in the Bible. Number one, when, when uh, a couple times in Jeremiah, but the first time was when Joseph was slow into, sold into slavery. He was sold to slave traders from the area east of the Jordan River where the balm of Gilead was, and they were, and they were carrying the balm of Gilead to be traded in Egypt. It's the first time we hear about it. Then we hear about it here. But it had this medicinal quality. And we say, where's that balm? Where's that healing? And 
we cry out, Lord, heal our heartaches. But sometimes it doesn't come. But we find encouragement from one another. 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Verse 26 says this. If one part suffers, all the parts suffer with it. And if one part is honored, all the parts are glad. Or Romans 12, 15. Be happy with those who are happy and weep with those who are weep. You see, the safest place to work through our dark emotions and through this anger and through this hurt is not in isolation, but in the presence of the Lord. We have to be with Him. God wants us, wants us to be with Him. I'm taking you all through Scripture today. I hope you're writing some of these down. If you go over to Psalm 73... And you read these first 17 verses. I'm not going to read them all for you. But God wants to journey with us. 73 verse 2 says, But as for me, I almost lost my footing. My feet were slipping and I was almost gone. And verse 17, But then I went into the sanctuary, your sanctuary, O God. And I finally understood the destiny of the wicked. I was slipping, I was falling, I can't do this on my own. Oh, but then I walked into your sanctuary. Oh God, it all became clear because there were others like me. We were all in the same place, we're all journeying together. We're all broken, we're all needing to be shaped. God, it's painful, man, it hurts. I don't want to give it up. <clears throat> but we do it together. And we're shaped and we're molded. And we don't do this in isolation. We do it in the presence of the God who loves us. You see, as Christians, we don't ignore the realities of living in a cursed world. But we have a hope. And I don't want to fast forward to the hope. I don't want to just simply say, yay, Jesus, he cures it all. He does. But laments we sit with. We sit with the pain. As we watch that person getting more and more sick, we sit with that pain. And we have to be in those moments. As we go through life, we sit with one another. We know what our balm of Gilead is. We know God has created a Savior for us. But even if you read the words of Christ, God is still weeping because He's simply saying, I've given you all this. You are my people. What are you doing this? You're exchanging me for worthless gods. Why do you do this? Okay, I'm going to fix it again. I got, I, I got Christ coming. He's going to die on the cross. He's my only son. Oh, I'm going to fix it all. It's great. You can really see my heart for love. And still they rejected the cornerstone. So God still weeps because we still turn our back on that. So we journey together. We weep together. We live together. You see... There was destruction in this text for us today. And in our world, we see the never-ending sorrow, never-ending attacks, never-ending disappointments, just like this passage. But our solution is we cry out. The solution that we find here in the text is they cried out to God. They got angry. They were together in community. And so what do we do? 
we grieve together. We cry out together. We come together. And we say, God, what are you moving us towards? God, we know suffering is everywhere, so how do we live now in the light of that reality? God, you're moving us. Man, I'm excited for the journey. What's going to happen? That's what we say together. <clears throat> That's where we're headed. And when you're following Christ and you're doing this together, life happens. And so you need one another. We need each other, Lakeside community. We stand together stronger. And then we say to our friends and our neighbors, hey, I got just the place for you. I got people that are going through the same thing that you're going through. Come and be a part with us together. Because we can worship together. We can grieve together. We can celebrate together. We can cry together. And we become more and more in relationship with one another. Sharing these burdens. It's okay to lament. It's right and good to lament. So let's cry out. Let me pray for you. Father, these moments that we're here together are ordained by you. And when we have weeks where you do surgery on our hearts, you give us strength to speak your words. And so I thank you for this opportunity. And God, I ask that you just continue to help to use the words of the prophet Jeremiah so many thousands of years later to help mold us, to shape us, so that, God, we become vessels of good for you. Vessels of community to where we do this life together. Onward and upward for your kingdom. So, God, allow us to sit in those moments of grief. And, God, just allow us to just be in this place. Because we're in it together. Father, to you be the glory. In your name, amen and amen. Our worship team is going to sing. I invite you to stand with them and just make this your prayer. And then as we go out together, let's just love our community and love each other.
receive this benediction this morning. May the God of all creation hold you close. And if you experience struggle, actually when you experience struggles and grief and sorrow, may he hold you close and may you draw closer to those in this place as we serve him faithfully. Go this week. Love and serve the Lord. You're dismissed.